Uh, this is a topic that has continued to evolve. In fact, the circadian rhythm mechanisms uh, and, the, and the genes that uh, control them have been um, awarded a, a Nobel Prize last year. So it's an exciting new area that's developing. Uh, and we know that genes do control the way the circadian rhythm is set up. We need hormones to go up and come down. We now also realize that the entire tissue, not just the hypothalamus pituitary axis, but also the entire tissue, pancreas, the liver, uh, and the other tissue, even the gut microbiota, are controlled by these genes that oscillate uh, to and fro over a 24-hour period. And that's an exciting new finding in the area of hypothalamus pituitary disorders. Um, sadly, in the modern society, light has come in even in the night and feeding has started happening that all of us eat pretty late in the night and keep up late use smartphones and other led devices in the night uh, and also the light pollution like the ambient light as well as the outside light that trickles into the through the window panes in the night disrupt this whole pattern of um, darkness in the night and the light in the day has been disrupted and that has led to many new epidemiological changes in the human disease behavior. So if you look at data that comes up with, um, for example, jet lag or sh sleep deprivation, which is quite common in the society now, and the emergence of the new diseases like diabetes, insulin resistance, or lack of insulin sensitivity, and other diseases so like obesity in childhood, we see that there is a big correlation between lack of sleep of at least six hours, um, as well as uh, morning jet lag, which is uh, not sleeping adequately and getting up late with an alarm clock, disrupts this insulin sensitivity cycles and the pancreatic functions. And actually the relative risk for diabetes is higher in those who are jet lagged and also have disrupted what is called the social jet lag, which is waking up early and not having had adequate sleep the previous night. Uh, so that's a, a new finding uh, because it, it all works out back to physiological basis of how the genes work and how our microbiota and our systems work and how we have disrupted that in the modern society. So some of the new measures that have been thought about are to help people to relearn sleep actually. Um, which is simple measures. Also, the new diet patterns, which have also emerged as effective ones, like not eating during the night time and having an early supper, which had been the traditional pattern, but which had been disrupted in the recent past. Um, so those are some of the simple countermeasures, using, not using LED lights or using blue light filters to cut out the, the long bandwidth light from the LED screens is another other intervention that had been shown to cut down the risk of obesity or metabolic disruption. Uh, probiotics might help the way gut microbiota had been disrupted. And there are new exciting developments in the form of gene modulation to help us to get back the clock on, t on time, uh, the internal clock, uh, so to speak, like uh, ERB uh, uh, antagonists and so on, which are new exciting new developments. So lots more to come in this field and we look forward to new research. Yeah, if you look at the South Asian population, it's actually 25% of almost all the metabolic diseases in the world. So it's, it's quite a high burden disease uh, burden area. Uh, we are also the diabetes capital of the world because 25% of the diabetes occurs here and we have common disorders like osteoporosis and others in high prevalence. Um, so new data like prevention methods, also how to get across to a mixed culture, uh, multi-ethnic region on diabetes prevention as well as other prevention programs is something that the world can learn from this region, I believe. The endocrine morbidity tends to be same across the world, but because South Asian population tends to be less privileged than the others, we tend to see much more morbidity in terms of endocrine disorders. For example, hyperparathyroidism is a biochemical diagnosis in the rest of the world, whereas in South Asia and Africa, it tends to be the full florid disease. So most of pituitary tumors, for example, 
are, are small tumors in the rest of the world, whereas we see the largest of them, which are diagnosed pretty late because of late interventions for testing in this population. So we tend to see much more florid disease that also allows us to intervene and look at how to prevent complications and also to set up early detection mechanisms in the population. Um, and that's the new exciting. ESD has been mostly about cardiovascular disease this year and how to prevent and also about complication prevention. So it's been an exciting two days so far and we are looking forward to many more things to come over these few days. Uh, cardiovascular disease prevention with uh, the intervention with GLP-1 analogs as well as SGLT2 inhibitors. Uh, many studies have been presented. We are looking forward to an exciting new uh, product, uh, the oral semaglutide this evening, and I'm sure more new data that is exciting will come.